And now on top of that, can you imagine the sadness, the teeth clenching when his fellow comrades in arms had to gather over him and stone him to death to keep the promise they had made to God. Sin takes us farther than we want to go. It keeps us longer than we want to stay. And it costs more than we ever want to pay. No wonder the place where Achan lost it all is called the Valley of Trouble. In chapter 8, we've got to move on. You know me, I can't leave it there. Because God doesn't leave it there. After the sin is removed from the camp, the Lord gives Joshua and Israel instructions on Ai. And that small kingdom is utterly destroyed without any problem. No biggie. And he tells Joshua, when you're done with Ai, give all the soldiers and all the families the plunder. It belongs to them. If Achan had only waited, if Achan had only obeyed, the very next battle, he would have been a rich man. You see, God's timing and doing things God's way brings blessing. It brings no guilt, brings no shame, If, if, if they had followed God and kept the commitment they made to them, if only when dissatisfaction with how things were going began to creep up, they had talked to God about it and talked to other people about it, read the scriptures to see all the encouragement that's in here. If only when he saw the temptation and it was at his fingertips, he had backed away and said, God, help me with this temptation. And then he said, Faith, I need your help, man. I'm so tempted to take this block of gold. Do you see that block of gold? His comrades would have said, Oh, man, don't touch that. That's devoted to God. God said, Don't touch it. Or it would bring pain on all of us. And it did. If only, instead of taking it up, think about it. All that silver, that gold, that robe, you know he had to smuggle that out among his fellow soldiers, don't you? You want to talk about, this guy had to be really, really secretive. Man, how crazy was that? Most of us in this room can look back or maybe look at today and say, if only I had done something different. Anybody ever said that one? You see, the power of the Holy Spirit in us can help us do something different. We need each other. We need to know the Word. We need to be talking to God. There's good news in this story. You see, when we accept Jesus into our hearts, and when we confess and repent, the Holy Spirit comes into us and begins that new work. A work that changes us and rearranges us. When, when He comes into us, we are in Him. It's a new covenant. It's one signed in the blood of the cross. It's not a one-way promise, you know. This following Jesus is not a one-way promise. While Jesus has made it all possible, this, this is not a one-way deal. This new covenant we're in, a covenant takes more than one person. It's a 
Jesus in us and us in Jesus. It's a daily commitment with him. And as his followers, it's what we do. We follow. If you're a follower of Jesus, then guess what you do? You follow Jesus. You follow Jesus' teaching. You follow Jesus' love. You follow who Jesus was. I mean, he has washed our sins away and given us the ability to love people we sure don't like. And he has given us the power through his blood and his sacrifice to say no to sin. He has given us his spirit to help us when we're tempted. He has given us the Bible to give us direction and he has given us the church so that we can receive tangible, touchable help. And boy, do I need it all the time. Like I said, even this morning, before I came into this sanctuary, I said, you, you got to pray for me. This is a hard text. While some may see the story of Achan as a lost cause, and for him, it's devastating, I see it as the available grace of God. Grace that not just saves us in a one-time deal, but grace that carries us every day. Grace that light leads us and guides us and, and grace that makes us strong. Remember the first thing God said to Joshua as Joshua took on the mantle. He said, be strong and courageous. And God gave him the grace to do that. This is a story all about grace. Grace for you. Grace for me. Grace for our world. It's good news. It's good news. God is still giving opportunities for grace to do its work. Let's pray. Well, Lord...